<clears throat> Hello, my fellow Latter-day Saints. It's uh, Kenzie Retro here. Now, there's a big issue that we need to try and deal with uh, that YouTubers like myself are dealing with right now. So, the issue is regarding this whole copper fiasco. Child online protection, uh, privacy protection act, or whatever it's called. That's now going to be coming into effect on the YouTube platform. And it's not, it's not just going to affect small YouTubers like myself. It's going to affect some of the YouTubers that I watch. KSI, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, uh, Amplified Man, BC. He's a wrestling YouTuber. Uh, JD from New York, JD from NY206, he's a wrestling YouTuber. Two sync FIFA YouTubers. At this point, we don't know how bad this is going to be. But here's, here's an article from Variety. This is what they have. This is what the article says. Um, uh, I, I just I've seen a lot of videos talking about the uncertainty of the future of the channel, of their channels, and that's what I'm addressing today. I addressed it in a discussion post. So, this is what the article says on Variety.com. YouTube starting this month is requiring all creators, regardless of location or whether or not they produce content intended for children, to designate whether their videos are made for kids. And many YouTubers are concerned that the new rules will hurt their monetization or even expose them to fines if their content is mislabeled. The change is a result of YouTube's $170 million settlement with the FTC and the New York Attorney General for alleged violations of the U.S. Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA. The law prohibits internet companies from collecting data from kids aged 13 and under, and YouTube was accused of violating that law. YouTube is putting, YouTube is putting onus on creators to comply with COPPA if you fail to set your audience accurately, you may face compliance issues with the FTC or other authorities and we may take action on your YouTube account, according to YouTube's Help Center document on the topic. Creators are subject to potential fines for running afoul of COPPA. According to, FT, according to the FTC, the law allows for civil penalties of up to $42,530 per violation. We'll just say $42,000 just for, just for, just for, um, just to make things easier. According to, according to the FTC, I say it on my podcast and I'll say it again, proofread these articles! According to the agency, however, the FTC considers a number of factors in determining the appropriate amount, including a company's financial condition and the impact a penalty could have on its ability to stay in business, per a November 22nd blog post. That alone has sent shockwaves through the YouTube community and has even led to some creators to delete videos or threaten to leave YouTube altogether. Goodness me. Uh, Danielle Pitts, or Doopy as she's known, she's a YouTube animator and a voice actor, tweeted this week, this, this cop-up redacted is terrifying. My videos aren't directed to children, but I can still get fined $42,000 for marketing my videos as meant for adults because it isn't mature enough? Because it can easily be mistaken? I'm heartbroken. YouTube was my dream. Some YouTubers are issuing 
dire predictions about the impact of the platform's new copper rules. If it doesn't get more attention, you can pretty much expect the end of gaming, animation, and cartoon videos on YouTube. Oh, good grief. That means I'm not going to be able to play Formula One, Rocket League, or any ga- I'm not going to be able to do any gaming content on my channel. Apart from Top 10s, my podcast. I won't be able to do everything wrong with Tom and Jerry. Um, oh, goodness me. This is a lot worse than we anticipated. And this is the reason why I've, this is one of the reasons why I've been staying quiet on this situation, because I don't know how this is going to affect my channel. Everything wrong with Tom and Jerry, Rocket League, uh, I just did a, a, few, a couple of months ago I did a platinum run of Kingdom Hearts 3, which has Disney characters in it, Disney primed towards kids. I won't be able to do Formula One. I won't be able to do Rocket League. What else am I not going to be able to do? I think I'm not going to be able to do Tom and Jerry. Oh, goodness me. And, and that's what Alex... Cardu- Carducci, aka Relax Out, Relax Alax, who makes gaming videos on his YouTube channel. Basically, Thanos snap YouTube. Basically, Thanos snap YouTube. That's what's happening. There's another part of YouTube's copper compliance rules that is causing major concern. Starting in January 2020, YouTube will limit the data it collects for videos mar- ma- marked as made for kids under the government settlement. For starters, that means YouTube videos designated for kids will not be able to include targets and targeted advertising. In addition, a whole slew of other features that depend on user data will be disabled, including comments, channel branding watermarks, the donate button, cards, and end screens, live chat, and live chat donations, notifications, and save to playlist or watch later features. Yikes! Plus, the kid video designation also will apparently make them unsearchable. On Thursday, Parry Grip, a daytime Emmy winning songwriter whose long running YouTube channel features songs about food and animals, noticed that, mar- vid- noticed that videos marked in YouTube for kids don't show up in a Google search. It's as if Google is censoring all my wholesome kid friendly videos, Grip said in a tweet. No raining tacos, no space unicorn. Who does this help? Absolutely no one! According to YouTube, it will use machine learning... Oh, for goodness sake. They're always relying on machines. And this is where the problem lies. I'm going to go through all the... At this point, I don't see anything positive about this at all. And I guarantee you I'm not the only one that's on that... on that same boat. According to YouTube, it will use machine learning to help us identify videos that are clearly directed to young audiences and may override a channel or creator's audience setting choice in case of error or abuse. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. YouTube creators can set YouTubers, YouTube creators can set their entire channel to made for kids or mark only specific videos as such. If you're uploading one video a day, you're going to have to... Ugh. This is the sort of stress that YouTubers like myself can really do without. Again, however, creators are advised that YouTube is not responsible for protecting users from legal liability. Great. If you need help determining whether or not... Your content is made for kids. Check out the... Okay. Help Center article. Okay. Or consult legal counsel, YouTube says. There's also the question of what videos made for kids even means. According to the FTC, there's no one-size-fits-all answer, but in general, it says copper rules apply if the intended audience is kids under 13. Ah, great. 
just great. Now, there is a lot of issues There's a lot of issues with this. First off, how, I mean, fine, they're gonna have a machine, but even machines make mistakes, which begs the question, how are you gonna be able to monitor every single video that's uploaded on every single channel, in every single minute, of every single hour, of every single day? It's not feasible. <laughs> There's, there's YouTubers that do this as a job. There's people that do this as a job. This is... This realistically isn't going to work. while I'm waiting for my dashboard to load up. Right, so here we go. Here's what the article says. Determining whether your content is made for kids. Oh, crumbs, I just realized. Fortnite. Kids play Fortnite. Oh, no. YouTubers that, YouTubers that put videos up of Fortnite and they stream it on Twitch. Oh, no, they're not, they're not gonna be able to do that anymore. A lot of people are a lot of people are putting this under worst case scenario. Right. So this is what it says. Regardless of your location, we require you to tell us whether or not your videos are made for kids. We are making these changes according to an agreement with the US Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, to help you comply with Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA, and or other applicable laws. Failure to set your content appropriately may result in consequences on YouTube or have legal consequences under COPPA and other laws. We provide some guidance on what is considered made for kids below, but we cannot provide legal advice if you're unsure whether your videos meet the standard, blah, 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 blah. According to, FTC's guidance, according to the FTC's guidance on COPPA, a video is child-directed, which we call made for kids, if children are the primary audience based on the factors described below. The children, children are not the primary audience, but the video is still directed to children based on the factors below. Here we go. When deciding whether or not your channel or video is made for kids, you should consider various factors, including subject of the matter, video, or whether it's, for example, educational content for preschoolers, whether children are your intended or actual audience for the video, whether the video includes child actors or models, whether the video includes characters, celebrities, or toys that appeals to children, including animated characters or cartoon figures. That brings my Everything Wrong With Tom and Jerry series into the fold. But, but the Tom and Jerry videos that I put up are not made for kids. Why? Because it's my take on the formula of CinemaSins, Everything Wrong With, insert film title here, or, in the case of uh, Game Care Network, GCN, everything wrong with insert game title here. Me, it's everything wrong with Tom and Jerry. I nitpick everything wrong with Tom and Jerry episodes. Kids are not going to enjoy watching that. Now, 
whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand. Well, some of the things I bring up. No. My gaming podcast, how are they going to understand what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, the terms that I bring up in Everything Wrong with Tom and Jerry, unrealistic physics, unrealistic sound design, fake gunshot on point of impact, respect, fake gunshot! Kids are not going to want to hear that! Unless they weren't raised properly, which in this case I blame the parents. Kids are far, kids are being, parents are being far too lenient these days. So here we go. Um, whether the video includes activities that appeal to children, such as play acting, simple songs or games or early education. Nope. Whether the video includes songs or stories, or song stories or poems for children. Oh, great. That brings my music Monday into the equation. Ugh. If I do Disney songs... Any other information that you may have, have to help determine your video's audience, like empirical evidence of the video's audience. What the? F what in the? What is that supposed to mean? Empirical, based on, concerned with, or verifiable by observation or experience, rather than theory or pure logic. Note, YouTube Analytics is not designed to help determine if your content is child-directed. Um, I feel it should be. You should use the factors outlined by the FTC above to set your audience. <sighs> Great. I'm going to have to change my, I'm going to have to change my content on my channel. No, I'm not changing the content on my channel. How old is the kid? The age of a kid in the United States is defined by anyone under the defined as anyone under the age of thirteen. However, the age of a kid may be higher in other countries. So consider the factors described above as appropriate given how kid is defined in applicable laws in your country. And consult legal counsel if you have any further questions. Goodness. I mean, what's to stop kids creating a fake YouTube account? with a fake birthday. What's to stop them from doing that? This just goes to show this system isn't exactly foolproof. FTC, people like us, we ain't stupid. We ain't stupid. Do not treat us as if we are. Going back to my point regarding analytics. Overview. Unique viewers, okay, engagements, the viewership, I'm not really concerned about that. This is the key thing, 
audience. This is the key thing we need to take into account. And no, not last seven days. Lifetime. That's what we're after. Lifetime. Here we go. So here we are. Watch time from subscribers. Uh, not subscribed, 64%. Okay. Gender. Oh. Some Dutch, apparently. And there. Here we go. Age. This is what we're after. My, the audience for my videos, zero percent over sixty-five, three point seven fifty-five to sixty-four, sixteen point two forty-five to fifty-four, twenty-nine point one thirty-five to forty-four. This is this is where the main this is where the main chunk of my audience is. This is where the main chunk of my audience is. 25 to 34, that's my main... That's where my main... That's where the bulk of my audience is right now. 45.3, 18 to 24, 5.7. 13 to 17, 0%. There is no one... That is, there is no one under the age of 18 that has seen my videos. No one, according to my analytics, under the age of 18. There is no one under the age of 18 watching my videos. Which is why my content is not, is labeled as not for kids. I'm at a point here where I might have to start doing edgier content on my channel. More mature videos, more mature video game playthroughs. Some of the some of the videos that I use in my editing. Lemon Grab's unacceptable. Lemon Grab is Adventure Time. Adventure Time is a kid's show. I'm not gonna be able to use that clip. Ugh! I'm not gonna be able to use the SpongeBob time cards. Ugh. You have Got to be kidding me. Look, if I have to change my con if I have to change the content on my channel, I will. But I'm gonna say this right now. So the whole world can hear this. That includes the FTC. The only person that's going to change the content on my channel is me. I am not backing down from anything or anyone. I ain't changing my content anytime soon.
I am not changing my content on my channel. What I will say though, is I somehow managed to get my own custom URL now. So it's one positive I can take out of it. My channel is eligible for monetization. Probably from the apprentice videos. By the way, folks, expect two apprentice videos over the course of this weekend. Because I'm two weeks behind on the apprentice. out to be longer than I anticipated, but at this point, I really don't care. So uh, here we are. I'm on my, I'm on the um, channel status and features. Custom thumbnails, external annotations, channel membership, content IDs. Yeah, I managed to get my own custom URL. So now I come up as youtube.com slash Kenzie Retro. I've just been thinking, guys. If I can source the classic episodes of The Apprentice, do you guys want me to do classic episodes of Everything Wrong with The Apprentice, like going like right back to the start of the of the series, series one, right through to now? Do you want me to do that on my channel? If you do. Sound off in the comments below, and I will see if I can source the episodes from somewhere. But obviously, I won't be able to. I won't be able to show the footage, and I'll still have to have the NCS, no, no copyright sound music in the background. So, there we go. I'll catch you guys very soon with everything wrong with The Apprentice and then I'll be all caught up and then we'll take it from there. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out and as always, stay faithful.